Now, this is also important. It's getting colder and more people are moving their activities indoors. Also, the next round of coronavirus variants are emerging. We haven't seen a significant wave across the states yet, but in the Bay Area, positivity rates are starting to creep back up. So joining us this morning to talk about how we can stay safe and healthy this holiday season is UCSF Infectious Disease Specialist Dr. Peter Cheng Hong. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Jocelyn. Thanks for having me on. All right, Dr. Peter Chin Hong here. I want to ask you because, I mean, we, a lot of people have been hearing about COVID for a long time. A lot of people have that COVID fatigue. But what can you tell us about the status of COVID in our communities right now? I mean, are, what are our cases rising significantly here? Um, they're kind of creeping up slowly. And I think that feels invisible to a lot of people. But in the hospital, you know, I've been seeing uh, COVID cases. Okay, so 150 in January a day in the hospital. Um, now, about two weeks ago, it's about 10 a day. And now it's kind of creeping up to about 18 a day. So we have about two people in the ICU. And, um, you know, with the test positivity rates increasing, the wastewater uh, epidemiology showing that COVID levels in the poop are increasing suggests that it is a real uh, trend that we're seeing. Right, and I know we have heard of so many variants throughout this pandemic. What can you tell us about the latest on that one? And are those at-home COVID tests still uh, effective when it comes to detecting COVID with those variants? Yeah, so right now, BA5 is not the only game in town. In fact, BA5 went from about, you know, 90% of cases now to about maybe 30 uh, or 40, 30% of cases. And we have the children of BA5 coming on board with weird letters and numbers like BQ1 and BQ1.1. And then we heard about this new one called BN1. All of them are sort of like Omicron grandchildren, and they're kind of feistier. Uh, they're not going to make you probably die more if you don't get a booster, but they may be a little bit more resistant. And are those at-home COVID tests still effective with that one? Yeah, so the at-home COVID test is uh, still effective, but you can't just stop at one negative particularly you have symptoms. So I think we had a study showing that. Yes, hello. I can still hear, I can still hear you. Just uh, if you could talk a little bit, you were about to talk about those at-home COVID tests. Yes, mm -hmm. so the at-home COVID test is best used if they're done repeatedly. So if you, you can't stop at one negative test, uh, you have to continue. We can still uh, hear you, yes. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, you have to keep on doing them uh, over and over again. Uh, if you can't wait, do a PCR test, but probably three uh, tests over the course of two to three days, particularly if you have symptoms. Uh, because COVID right now in Omicron starts off in the throat. It takes a while to go up to the nose. If you want increased sensitivity, combine your throat and your nose swabs together. Good information there to know. Very quickly, Thanksgiving is right around the corner when many of us want to spend time with our loved ones. Some people are getting that bivalent booster. What is your recommendation for families to stay safe this holiday season? So I think about the ABCs, A is for the air. So think about ventilation. Uh, think about wearing a mask, particularly if you're indoors with vulnerable folks. B is for that booster shot. Only 20% of older folks have gotten it. 10% of general population. Get it with your flu shot as soon as possible. And C is for COVID testing, we talked about that. And, and C is also for um, you know children and making sure that they're protected by getting boosted and vaccinated as well. All right, Dr. Peter Chin Hong with UCSF. Very